So we have approached that time in the primary process where we're all feeling exhausted and quite frankly, like just myself at least, I can't stand anyone <laughs> who's running for president with the exception of course of Bernie Sanders. He was the only person on that debate stage who I can tolerate listening to for extended periods of time, even if I know exactly what he's going to say because I've seen many of his speeches and he largely says the same thing. But I wanted to share highlights from the debate, my favorite Bernie moments. There were a lot of moments that uh, Bernie Sanders had that I think were phenomenal, but I chose to select these clips because I think it demonstrates exactly why he is the most electable going up against Donald Trump. Because whatever argument Donald Trump wants to use against Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders can undercut it and make a case against Donald Trump. So the first issue is trade. Donald Trump was incredibly popular because of his populist position when it comes to trade. He spoke out against NAFTA and the TPP, and he blasted Hillary Clinton for that. So he now constructed a new trade deal that Bernie Sanders opposes. And Bernie Sanders explained in a very simplistic way why Trump's trade deal does basically the same thing, even though there's some minor improvements. You know, it's, it doesn't go far enough and we can do better. And the way that he explains this, like, I don't think Donald Trump will be able to recover from this, you know, in the event they're debating the issue of trade. Take a look. The answer is we could do much better than a Trump-led uh, trade deal. Uh, this deal, and I think the proponents of it acknowledge, will result in the continuation of the loss of hundreds of thousands of good paying jobs as a result of outsourcing. The heart and soul of our disaster trade agreements, and I'm the guy who voted against NAFTA and against permanent normal trade relations with China, is that we have forced American workers to compete against people in Mexico, in China, elsewhere, who earn starvation wages, a dollar or two dollars an hour. Second of all, every major environmental organization has said no to this new trade agreement because it does not even have the phrase climate change in it. And given the fact that climate change is right now the greatest threat facing this planet, I will not vote for a trade agreement that does not incorporate very, very strong principles to significantly lower fossil fuel emissions uh, in the world. But Senator Sanders, to be clear, the AFL-CIO supports this deal. Are you unwilling to compromise? The AFL-CIO does, the machinist union does not, and every environmental organization in this country, uh, including the Sunrise organization, who supporting, were supporting my candidacy, opposes it. Now, I think it was so important to bring up how the issue of trade and climate change intersects. And after he did that, the moderator scolded him because she believed that he was getting off topic. It's a climate change, but I'd like to stay on trade. Senator Warren. Well, they are the same. So, I mean, that was really embarrassing. If I'm a moderator, I'm cringing watching that back because you just demonstrated to the world how ignorant you are. And this is so crucial because it's a key difference between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, which average consumers need to see. They need to understand what the differences are between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. She supports Donald Trump's trade deal. Bernie Sanders does not. One of the main reasons why he rejects it is because it doesn't mention climate change. So it proves to people that he takes climate change more seriously than Elizabeth Warren, even though I believe she probably takes it seriously. Bernie is the one who is unapologetic in his advocacy that we do something about it. So, um... Also, I think that the fact that he opposes it makes him stronger in a general against Donald Trump. Because as I stated in my big debate breakdown video, the long one that I put out, you know, Trump is going to say, well, look, you are supporting my trade deal, Elizabeth Warren, so why don't you just endorse me? Now, that's not to say that you should be a hack and reject everything that Donald Trump does, but there's actually progressive, substantive reasons to reject this trade deal. It's not good enough. I mean, you're getting NAFTA 2.0 with some minor tweaks, but also some things that are perhaps worse than NAFTA, arguably. So you need to make your case to the American people why it's bad. And Bernie Sanders, I think, did a great job at doing that. Now, moving on to the next issue, since we're talking about climate change, Bernie Sanders, out of everyone on that stage, communicates, in spite of all of Tom Steyer's thumb pointing, that he's the only 
person who has a plan that will save the planet. Let's be clear. If we as a nation do not transform our energy system away from fossil fuel, not by 2050, not by 2040, but unless we lead the world right now, not easy stuff, the planet we are leaving our kids will be uninhabitable and unhealthy. We are seeing Australia burning. We saw California burning. The drought here in Iowa is going to make it harder for farmers to produce the food that we need. This is, of course, a national crisis. I've introduced legislation to indicate it's a national crisis. We have got to take on the fossil fuel industry and all of their lies and tell them that their short-term profits are not more important than the future of this planet. That's what the Green New Deal does. That's what my legislation does. And that is what we have. So I'm not sure why the audio cut out towards the end, but he said that is what we need to do. Um, so, I mean, he really he can't be more clear than that. He is the climate change candidate. This is why the Sunrise Movement endorsed him. And this is why he has the highest score um, from Greenpeace. It's because he takes climate change incredibly seriously. He's the only candidate on that stage who I trust is actually going to take this issue seriously right he's not going to compromise he's going to make sure that we have a planet to live on and if he fails i know he's going to go down swinging fighting as hard as he possibly can but also taking executive action to make sure we're doing everything in our power to combat climate change even if you know congress won't act um and he implied that everyone else on that stage they don't take the issue serious enough and they they have plans that don't go far enough and if we don't enact bernie's version of the green new deal we're not going to have a planet that's habitable. It's as simple as that. So Tom Steyer can talk about how I'm the only person on this stage who has committed to declaring a climate emergency on day one. That is meaningless. Declaring it an emergency is not as good as actually treating it as an emergency with a policy solution. And Bernie Sanders has already said he would declare it as an emergency. I believe he introduced legislation with AOC to declare climate change a national emergency. So you're not actually scoring any points over on Bernie by saying that because you have a plan that's not as good as Bernie Sanders, demonstrably so, right? This is what organizations like Greenpeace has has, uh, has said about all of the plans after scoring them. So you're a bullshitter, Tom Steyer, and Bernie Sanders just, I think he, he dominated the debate on the issue of climate change and he brought it up even when the issue wasn't what they were all debating like he's serious about this it's at the top of his mind and i truly believe he's the one we need if we want a chance at saving the planet now an issue came up and i didn't really think that the other candidates did poorly uh they were talking about universal child care and i have no issue with joe biden's response i believe he signaled support for it uh elizabeth warren talked about this but here's the thing none of what they say matters because I don't believe they're going to implement it. I don't believe they're going to prioritize it. I believe Bernie Sanders when he says we should have universal child care. And it's not just because, you know, he signals support for this policy, but because he takes the extra time to explain why it's absurd that we don't already have that. Why our priorities are ass backwards in this country. We're spending more than the next eight countries combined on the military budget, most of which are our allies. He didn't say this. I'm saying that, but it's true. And... How is it that we live in the richest country in the world, but parents can't afford to send their children to daycare and preschool? It's, it's just absurd. So the way that he explains it, I mean, he goes further than all of the candidates just understanding the way our system is fundamentally broken. Take a look. Every psychologist in the world knows zero through four are the most important years of human life, intellectually and emotionally. And yet our current child care system is an embarrassment it is unaffordable. Child care workers are making wages lower than McDonald's workers. We need to fundamentally change priorities in America. We should not be one of the few countries that does not have universal, high quality, affordable child care. We should not be one of the only major countries not to guarantee health care to all people as a human right. We should not be spending 10, more than the 10 next countries on the military hundreds of billions of dollars in subsidies for the fossil fuel industry, tax breaks for billionaires, and then tell the moms and dads in this country Thank we cannot you, have high-quality, affordable Biden, I'm coming to you now. That is wrong. 
Of course he was cut off. Of course. No substance is allowed. What do you think this is? A debate? So frustrating. Now, um, moving on, he was asked the most egregious and I think offensive question out of all the debates we've seen thus far. He was asked how all of his policies, you know, if he enacts all of them, assuming he's that successful, how he would avoid bankrupting the country. That is downright offensive because I don't remember a Republican being asked about how they can avoid bankrupting the countries with their endless fucking advocacy for wars. You're not going to ask Joe Biden how he can avoid bankrupting the country by staying in Iraq indefinitely. Why is it that Bernie Sanders is being asked this question? The media focuses on the cost only when policies help people, but if they are hurting people and literally killing people abroad, they don't care about the cost at all. Nobody asked how much a war with Iran would cost last week. So this question is downright egregious, and that moderator who asked it should be downright embarrassed that she asked that question that her bosses probably wanted her to ask, but you should be embarrassed. Is this what you wanted to do? Is this why you got into journalism? I'm assuming you came into this field wanting to speak truth to power, but now look at you. You are a stenographer to people in power. Shameful. Disgusting. Nonetheless, though, putting that rant aside... Bernie Sanders always gets asked these questions that are so ridiculous, and he never lets it affect him. Like me, I would get pissed. You would be able to visibly see my anger, but Bernie never is affected by this. He just lets it roll off his shoulders, and he answered flawlessly given the absurdity of that question and the way that it was framed. Let us be clear what Medicare for All does. It ends all premiums. It ends all copayments. It ends the absurdity of deductibles. It ends out-of-pocket expenses. It takes on the pharmaceutical industry, which in some cases charges us 10 times more for the same prescription drugs sold abroad as sold here. What we will do through a Medicare for All single-payer program is substantially lower the cost of health care for employers and workers because we end the $100 billion a year that the health care industry makes and the $500 billion a year we spend in administrative, uh, not, in the administrative nightmare of dealing with thousands of separate insurance plans. Health care is a human right. Every other major country on earth is guaranteeing health care for all. The time is long overdue for us to do. I genuinely believe that Bernie Sanders is getting much better at explaining the way that Medicare for All will impact people at an individual concrete level like he is nailing it here my only complaint is that he needs to be more aggressive in calling out the corruption of his opponents that's why they don't support medicare for all pete Buttigieg initially supported it but now he's in favor of medicare for all it's not because he genuinely believes that that's the better policy it's because he's taking money from health insurance industries so i'm looking for that aggression from bernie sanders here um but regardless bernie sanders still manages to attack his opponents while not being rude and hostile and one particular moment when they were talking about foreign policy he nailed Joe Biden for being naive and believing George W. Bush. And this short, I think it's 18 second clip, it just it is, it's so brutal. Like you have to see this, take a look. Joe and I listened to what Dick Cheney and George Bush and Rumsfeld had to say. I thought they were lying. I didn't believe them for a moment. I took to the floor. I did everything I could to prevent that war. Joe saw it differently. That was brutal. That was absolutely brutal because it communicates to people that Joe Biden was duped by George W. Bush and he is already signaling to us that he is as naive now as he was back then. He thinks that Republicans will all of a sudden have this coming to Jesus moment once Trump is out of office and that even Mitch McConnell may have an epiphany once Trump leaves and suddenly work with Democrats. I mean, this is the man who was part of the Obama administration. He had a Supreme Court justice stolen from him by Mitch McConnell, and he's still naive. So that was brutal and devastating. And Bernie Sanders has a way of communicating how bad the other candidates are without being overly aggressive and rude. I just wish that he would ramp it up a little bit and contrast more with candidates if he doesn't want to outright be aggressive. Now, 
at this point in time, we're going to wrap up this video. Usually, I would leave you with the closing statements, but I actually didn't think that Bernie's closing statement was the best moment of the night. Don't get me wrong. I liked it. I think he did a great job. But as David Dole pointed out on Twitter, I think that he would have been better served if he spent that time um, making the case for his electability and explaining how the other candidates on that stage are less electable because they are incapable of in exciting the base in the way that he is. Um, but what I do want to leave you with is my personal favorite moment of the night because it shows how in a debate against Donald Trump in a general election, he is incredibly strong. So everyone in the Democratic Party establishment and pundits are fear-mongering about how that socialist label will hurt Bernie Sanders in a head-to-head -head matchup against Donald Trump. But Bernie Sanders here was asked that question and asked, you know, does he believe that's going to hurt him? And the way that he handled this was flawless. The way he explains democratic socialism is he explains what it means to him and explains how Donald Trump is also a socialist. He's just a socialist for the rich. So I will leave you with Bernie Sanders making the case for himself and explaining how, you know, um, Trump is not going to be able to use this against him because Trump, like it or not, is a socialist. Not at all. And that is because the campaign that we are going to run will expose the fraudulency of who Donald Trump is. Donald Trump is corrupt. He is a pathological liar and he is a fraud. Now, when Trump talks about socialism, what he talks about is giving hundreds of billions of dollars in tax breaks and subsidies to the fossil fuel industry. Donald Trump is a businessman, received $800 million in tax breaks and subsidies to build luxury housing. My democratic socialism says health care is a human right. We're going to raise the minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour. We're going to make public colleges and universities tuition free. We're going to have a Green New Deal and create up to $20 million saving the planet for our children and our grandchildren. We are going to take on the greed and corruption of the pharmaceutical industry and the insurance company.